Hey guys, welcome back. And today we're talking about entryways, which are one of my favorite things to design. Now, why? Because after I've been... <laughs> because after 30 years of designing hotels and homes, the fun thing about entries is once you get the componentry together, it's eye candy all the way. Just take a look at some of these, you guys. Oh my God, they are just amazing. I adore this one with the pink wall when you first walk in. That's fabulous. Or how about this? Oh, this one's in Paris with that railless stair curving up around and over. Oh my God, that's amazing. And I adore this one with the round wood based table. That's fantastic. Or this one, clearly an art collector, where he has just this sinuous little curved seat in the middle and then nothing but gallery walls. Baby, that's just taken at home. Oh my God, I just, they're all so different and I just adore every one of them for their uniqueness and their incredible sense of style statement. Okay, so now your home's entry is your guest's first impression. It's super important that it manages to accomplish three things. It of course needs to welcome the visitor. It needs to function as an entryway, and there are some elements to that. And it needs to crush your style goals. So I'm gonna give you my seven rules for doing killer entries, and they'll work regardless of what kind of space you have. But to know how to do a fabulous entry, we have to jump back into our history book for a second. Now, way back in the day, when someone came to your home, they were transitioning from filthy streets and horse-drawn carriages or tons of walking, because that's how everybody got around, and usually it was in inclement weather. Now, the formal space of the entry became that space where they transitioned from the outdoors and all those other kind of nasty elements to the intimacy of a person's private home. So now we know why entryways are so important. Here's my seven rules that will help you create a fabulous one and make sure you don't leave anything out. Super important. The number one rule when you're designing your entryway is to never fight your architecture. And it doesn't really matter what you're dealing with. Maybe you have a grand staircase or a formal hall. Maybe it's just a simple wall or even nothing. In the case of a lot of small spaces, you fall straight into the room from the entry door. So you can include all the elements in any condition of an entryway. It's just a matter of how you interpret them. So now number two is to always plan for a surface. And if you've got the room, a little place to sit can be a stool or something like that. The reason the surface is so important is because the surface acts as an anchor to the entryway. And what that means is it can be filled with anything or nothing. It can be a floral arrangement, plants, just a candle and a trinket tray. It kind of doesn't matter. The point is that and this is going back to our history lesson, it was often common for people to leave what they called their calling card, which was simply a card with their name on it. And it let you know if you were out that they had come by while you were gone. But what's fun about that is that that's the origin story of what is now today's business card. And the thing I love about surfaces is that this is a major style statement opportunity and you don't want to miss it. Take a look at this beautiful, round, exquisitely simple table with just a beautiful little kind of X folding table underneath that. That's fabulous and it does everything it needs to do. Or you may need to double up and add some storage underneath like they have on this picture with the basket underneath. Or, oh my gosh, I love this one with just the simple little olive branch coming out of the top. Or, ooh, this one's sexy too. The 
table is pushed into the corner of the entryway and then there's a little stool with an orange top on the side. These are all fabulous solutions. They can work in small spaces, but they get the job done of having that furniture anchor piece as the front point of the entry. And also those little stools were sort of important because again, thinking back to the way entries used to function, people would arrive at your doorsteps with shoes that were filthy and they often needed to transition from that into something else to enter your home with. So the third rule that's super important that actually has to do with shoes is flooring. Now flooring in an entryway is significant because people are transitioning from the outside to the inside. And so often you'll want either super hard flooring choice, or if you don't have a choice, you definitely want to have some type of rug or matting or some kind of flooring that gives them the ability to transition from their street shoe bottom to something that's okay to walk through the rest of your house. Now, in many cultures, it actually allows you to use the stool that's in the other rule and sit down, change your shoes, or take your shoes off completely as you walk through the rest of the house. So flooring is a very important option. Another good tip to remind yourself of is don't always think about just have an area rug inside your entryway. You also want to consider having some type of rough weatherproof mat at the outside of your front entry door that just kind of scrapes the first layer of dirt off and can be very welcoming. I think this little one that says hello is very cute. And don't forget guys, flooring opportunities are a real style statement option here. So I love this one that's the jute rug next to the staircase, that's fantastic. Or the black and white stone. Now that's only if you have the ability to change out to hard flooring. But if you only have the ability to do a rug, make sure that rug screams your style. So now my number four rule is that a guest should always be welcomed with great lighting. And that's super important because again, remember they're transitioning from outside, whether it's night or day, and they're coming into an inside space and that space is foreign to them. So they need to make sure that they have enough lighting so that they have good visual cues. Plus the fact that lighting is another fun style statement. So, you know, go to town on it. Get a fabulous pendant or a chandelier. Oh my gosh, these are all amazing. I love this starburst one in this one. That's fantastic. Also make sure to layer your lighting. So add a pedestal lamp or some type of tabletop lamp if you'd like. Mm, consider something as an accent perhaps if you want, but there's a lot of ways to do lighting in an entryway that looks good. So make sure that you have multiple layers and that the space is well lit. Okay, so now my fifth element that's super important. No, sorry. So my fifth rule is all about storage and storage is super important because so often most of your visitors will be transitioning from outside and they'll have outerwear. So hats, coats, you name it, muttons, miffins, <laughs> mittens, muffs, all kinds of things. And you need to do something with that. If you don't have a built-in coat closet, or a butler, then you need to do something with those things. So we need to think about storage options. And there's beautiful things that you can get that are sort of quasi units that you can use, like this one from Renovation, or I think this one's from Pottery Barn, which is really great. It has hooks and all those little storage drawers, which is fantastic. If you've got a little bit of a nook, you can build something in. Or if you just don't have anything, think about freestanding coat trees. Those are fantastic. Look at this one, that's amazing. Or hooks, I love good hooks when they're placed the right way. Everything looks artistic on them. So it's lots of options and you just wanna get everything out of the way and up off the floor. Also for some climates, and you guys know who you are in the UK, you want yourself a brawly stand or an umbrella stand because people will be coming in from outdoors, they'll have wet umbrellas and you don't want that going on your 
rug or your wood floors, you want that to go into something that contains that water until you can deal with it later. So I love this little sweet little one that's kind of hexagonal shaped. And then I love this sassy little one that's in some apartment in New York. That's also great as well. And then it's always nice to have a little bit of extra storage. So for instance, in this console table, they've thrown a couple of extra big baskets underneath there. So if people have, you know, some mittens and some random flotsam and jetsam, you can just throw it all in there. So now the number six rule is to always consider having an eye level mirror in your entryway. Now there's all kinds of elements around the feng shui of a mirror at an entry, which is all good. But I have a far more pedantic reason, which is that when guests transition from outside to inside, often, I know I do, I want to double check to make sure that I'm not looking a little too disheveled or sporting hat hair. That's never fun. And it gives me an opportunity to kind of like double check on things. So another opportunity for a huge style statement. I love this one that has like a, an assembly of mirrors, which is really beautiful. Or I love this one that's done on the end of the hallway and it's a full length so you can check your shoes. And just remember to think about the idea that it's a style statement so you can play with it and really make it amazing. Mirrors are also helpful in reflecting the nature from outdoors if you have fixed side lights or a glass front door and that also helps to bring some of the greenery in and create a nice transition but most importantly you need to remember about a mirror now what is it repeat after me it's a major style statement so you can go to town on one so now my seventh rule is a super important one because it's kind of subtle and it's all about nature now whether it's dried fresh a living plant fresh cut flowers it really doesn't matter but remember on a subconscious level we're moving from the outside where nature is to the inside where a lot of times it isn't so this eases that transition and gives you the opportunity to really kind of make a lovely statement. You know, in hotels, we always did massive cut flowers and arranged them weekly. That can get a little expensive, but you know, there's a lot of different options you can take a look at. I love this little fig tree in a corner by the staircase. That's fantastic. Or this fabulous round table with, I don't know what happening and lemons and, oh, that's fantastic. Or there's something as simple as just these little cherry blossom twigs that are great. So there's a lot of different options. This one's even fun, the little cactus. That's a cute little fun statement too, but it brings the nature in and it works on a subconscious level to help the transition of the guest. Now, because entries have so many components to them, there's a lot of different choices to make. So I've linked to a few down below, but if you want my full list, which I've divided out by style for you guys, you wanna make sure you go to my email list at lisaholt.com, get on that, and I'll be sending that out in a couple weeks. Oh, that's really gonna help you guys out with a ton of different options. Now guys, the next thing you wanna do before you leave is you wanna go over here to my newest mistakes video. This one will really help you out in terms of making any mistakes. Be sure and like and subscribe, you can click right here to go to the video and I'll see you guys next week.